It's a as I talked to you earlier, they were like, that is small. "You're like, I thought the deck was five times bigger than this, and it's it's that's, so tiny." Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, "Man, y'all make that thing look big." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've had really nine people playing on that thing before. I was like, "That's where so we don't recommend it. We don't recommend it." What's happening, Sugar Shack family? We're back with another episode of the Sugar Shack podcast. We just wrapped up an amazing session with our new friend Mahali here at the Sugar Shack. Come on, a live audience. How was session? We just ate some yummy food. How was food? Food was food delicious. Food and drinks. Yeah, good. Very yummy. Some smoked fish. It was nice. Some apricot chutney. Yeah. It was really good. Um, thanks for joining me, man, for this podcast. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Just take a minute to chill and, and talk. I'd love to get to know you better because, you know, we're, we're new acquaintance, acquaintances personally. Acquaintances. So I'd love to hear your story, you know, how you came to become the person you are as an artist and wow, yeah. break ice. All right. Um, my story is, I guess it's a long... <laughs> right? Like, where do you start? When I was four years old, no, I mean, just the brief uh, I took a trip once. Um, no, uh, I, well, when I went to college, I, I found a lovely group of gents and started a band called Twiddle. Um, What'd you go to college for originally? I was an acting major. Oh, cool. No, no, it was just, it was mainly... <laughs> The easiest thing I could click on the, like, choices. Uh, so you were just trying to get in yeah. and get out. Yeah, yeah. I could have done, like, the music department, but there was extracurricular work that needed to be done, and I was like, no, nah, acting <laughs> seems to want like, me in, so minimum. I'm good. Yeah, and actually, the, the keyboard player uh, in Twiddle, Ryan, I met him in the acting department. We we both had, were, like, in the same class. Gotcha. But we 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 liked the stage, but more for music. Yeah. Yeah, bugs, bugs out here. That's no, okay. Buggy. Bugs you are good. Jackson told you it's mad buggy. Jackson did say he's yeah, a little buggy. Elevators. <laughs> yeah. He's like, man, you going to the swamp. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, cool. So, so how long has Twiddle been a band? 16 or 17 years, something wow. like that. Sick. Yeah. Um, a lot and of, that's long been the time. main project that you've built mostly. Because it's separate, right? Like Mahali, your It is. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really... I don't play a lot of Twiddle songs with this actor and t- yeah. same kind of thing with, with that. They're kind of different musical outlets for me. Mm. Um, or, originally, though, but I've always been doing the solo thing. I never wanted a day job. So, you know, a lot in the early years, Twiddle would be doing, like, Weekend Warriors stuff where we just mm-hmm. crushed Thursday to Sunday. Mm-hmm. And that was a lot of years. But Monday... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I, I had my local gigs and I was I was yeah. working a lot. So I basically played every night I could solo with the looper. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of where that um, kind of thing started. And I noticed that there was some like music I was writing or wanting to write or feeling the vibe that maybe I thought wasn't the right move for t- Twiddle or just like wasn't the right vibe. So mm-hmm. I sort of kept them in my back pocket till I felt like it was time to, to go for it. And 17 years later, you're like, time to go for <laughs> time it. To go for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all the while, I kept doing it. But, yeah, it was uh, a lot of the songs on my first record, Breathe and Let Go, uh, I had written over time, mm. you know, like a, few, a long time, like yeah. in, in the time where Twiddle was touring and on the road a lot. Um, and there were just basically all the songs that when I was, like, working through them, I just felt like, they had a different place somewhere, and mm-hmm. it wasn't with Twiddle, so I sort of just kept them on the Was side. that a challenge for you, like, just from a writing perspective, over a span of time, right? You write these songs, and, like, you write them in different phases of your life and different phases of maturity. And so, like, you collect these songs. How was that, like, trying to bring continuity to that over a span of time? I, I always had this vision that I was going to do this solo thing at some point. Like, I, I really wanted... Uh, a different vibe and sound for a lot of these songs and um the solo kind of sets that I were doing in in all the various restaurants or clubs or whatever it was it was basically like a testing ground for a lot of these songs got it and i just always had like a feeling on a lot of them that you know if if done right in a different direction they could have you know more of an impact and and like maybe for me a different outlet than twiddle would 
would give them. So mm-hmm. I just sort of didn't think too much of it. I just kind of kept them in the in, on the back burner. Kept okay. them on ice, as we say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fascinating because you, you just, it's the long game, right? And like picking the best of the best for, for when you want to release those. And that's cool. I think also a lot of them are kind of personal, pretty personal. And maybe at the time when I was writing them, I wasn't ready to like get Share them out. Them. Yeah. 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 And that happens too. So yeah. that, you know. And you like get some separation and time apart from the. Yeah. Like, and then you're good to go. Yeah. Then like you're like, all right, this is fine. I'm past that point in my life. Yeah. I can like reflect back on it. And interesting. Get it yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Um, but in your solo project, now you find yourself kind of in the reggae community. Yeah. Uh, and so tell me about your journey of landing there. Because Twiddle's more of like, would you say, like, I mean, it's genre bending for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, but... we kind of fall in the jam band world. Yeah. You know, we're a lot of... Uh, Twiddle is just as much uh, focused on the lyrical content as we are on the musical content mm-hmm. as far as, like being able to improvise and kind of create a new experience every time we walk out on that stage. That's cool. Which can be kind of taxing at some point Mm -hmm. uh, to try and, like, renew yourself every time you walk out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I, there was a part of me that just really wanted to just, like, play the songs I wrote, have people sing along, and not care how long the songs were or how complicated they were and just really kind of simplify it. Yeah. And, And I think that was a lot of my, like kind of move towards the the solo thing Mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know in reggae you just oh right the reggae thing sorry (laughs) i was like wait there was a a point to this so the i've always had reggae's always been like my favorite music to listen to oh nice uh when i was like maybe 14 i took a trip with my best friend uh nigel to um saint lucia and he was that's where his family's from. And, you know, it was kind of an eye-opening experience for me to experience a, a whole new culture in a different way than I've ever, you know, mm-hmm. at the time. And also really introduced me to reggae music mm-hmm. and uh, this whole other side of things. And so um, when I came home, I was really, really into it. And um, my mom is British, and, and so we would spend some time in London and... I remember buying like a lot of Bob Marley uh, CDs, or I think I had, a, yeah, probably like a Disc Man, yeah, whatever it was at the man. time. And I don't, I don't Anti- think it was tape. Disc Man, yeah, no, I had the Walkman. good one for planes. Yeah, yeah, I drew all over it. I remember, but nice. I remember you have buying like a the lot of stuff. Accompanying like CD case, where it flipping through yeah. your CD case. Yeah, of course, oh, I had yeah. that. Long and then road trips. It was like Bob Marley and Ernest Wranglin. I found like this guitar <laughs> player who, like, really blew my mind and was sort of the, like, uh, driving force behind my lead guitar playing for all the years wow. following that. And I was cool. pretty young, so that was pretty pretty special for me, I'd say. Yeah. And really just put a passion for reggae in it. And I never really, like, intended to do, um, like, a full reggae album. I always, when I'm writing songs, some end up, like, with a reggae flair. Twiddle has some reggae songs mm-hmm. and... Um, you know, I've always sort of, in my natural writing, kind of gravitated towards it. But through my friendship with Nate from Ayaterra is how the whole thing kind of came about. And he's just like a, uh, I don't know, he's kind of like a genius. You know, it's like yeah. I, I... Nate's the man. I would just like record basically the chords and the vocals, the words and the chords for the songs. Like the very stripped down version of the song, mm-hmm. a, a basic demo. And I, it started with All Day. I, I just... When I was writing that song, I really was influ- I had been influenced by Itera so much. I had been listening to so much of them that, like, some of the vocal lines in it, I was trying to copy, like, how Nate was singing all day, like, yeah. all those little things. I, I used to never kind of do that, but I sent him the song just to be like, hey, man, like, do you like this? I wrote it. It was, like, inspired by you. And he just sent me back the fully mocked version of what y'all hear as all day right now wow like this fully produced super epic version of the tune just didn't have any vocals and he was like what do you think of this and when i realized what it was it kind of blew my mind and so i recorded the vocals sent them back to me plugged them in and then you know it was like well you have you have to do a verse obviously yeah. <laughs> so you know he gave me one of the greatest verses ever and um 
you know, it was very natural like that. And then it was done, and we just had this one song, and we put it out as a single, and it did really well. The best single I've, I've had, I think. When that was just before the pandemic, that was like, and when it all happened, I was now sitting on like a few other reggae songs I had written and I sent them to Nate just to kind of see what he thought and kind of the same thing happened. This guy's just crazy. It's just, wow. Sends me back these like ridiculous mocked versions of these songs, you know, where it's like, I would never hear what he heard, but where he went with it was so incredible. I don't think there was ever a time that he sent me a mix back where I didn't like it. Wow. I don't think that, never once. Uh, it was like Christmas. Anytime I saw a text from him with a, like a little attachment to like a Dropbox file or whatever it was, you know, like I was like, I'm about to get one of my <laughs> songs in like the dopest form possible. Wow. I'd be on the road with Twiddle and I'd be like on the bus like, oh my just like losing my mind. You like, know, yeah, like, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody's cool. Everybody, yeah, I was great. just like, you guys got to hear what Nate's doing, you know, because yeah. we toured with that tear for so long. So it was, wow. everyone was just so, uh, you know, it's, it's working with, with uh, him on, on the reggae stuff just felt so easy and really like his brain complements my writing style so well, his musical ear. And our, actually our guitar playing style is very similar too. Cool. Like the way we write our lead lines, we when we were on tour together, we realized we're we all sit we sit in the same pocket. Yeah. Now he's been practicing like a million times a day, and he's like ridiculously good. And I don't think he's probably sitting. (laughs) (laughs) He's probably writing some crazy craziness now. It's cool when you find somebody like that in life, right? Like you've been doing this project for so long with Twiddle, and then you're trying to shift gears, and something like this opens up because of relationship, and it's just like the chemistry is is crazy, and you're just creating art in a whole new way with somebody, you know? That's what it felt like. And and as we kept going, there was no, like, we're doing an album together. Mm-hmm. This is going to be your next album. It was just like, let's do one, cool. It's done, let's put it out. We did another, cool. It's done, yeah. let's put it out. And then I was just like, yo, I really like the vibe. I sent him a bunch. And before we knew it, we were sitting on a lot of tracks, slightly more than an EP. Mm-hmm. So it was like, let's finish this up and and uh, and get it out. Yeah. And he had so many beautiful connections uh, to so many great players in the scene, too, Mm -hmm. which I would never... Like a whole new palette of... Exactly. Tools and... And And I'm, you know, I'm I'm like, I'm always learning. I'm always trying to learn and, and, and better the craft. And like he, his knowledge of reggae and all the rhythms and everything that comes along with it was so new to me and just like learning all of it and... Him being like, yo, let me just send you these drum beats. Mm-hmm. And instead of just like vibing out on your acoustic, why don't you write to these beats I'm sending you? Because maybe you'll come up with something different. And that's yeah. exactly what happened is like instead of me just with my acoustic strumming in my living room, like I was just like listening to his drum beats that he would send me nice. and and forming my like words from that, which gave the cadence of the lyrics a much more like rhythmic vibe you know because yeah. i was vibing off of the the pulse of the tune awesome. so like that yeah what a cool way just to shift you know you've been in maybe a certain way of writing and thinking and performing with twiddle in a mindset and then you just switch and yeah create something new like that That's it was very thing. natural it wasn't so purposeful it was more yeah. just like this is really working so right. let's keep going with it do you think you know? that i mean do you have any f- feelers out for the the future of your solo project like do you want to keep it in that that yeah, so I, I love, scene, or do you want to so shift? my first record, Breathe and Let Go, did yeah. have some reggae tunes on yeah. it, and I, that was produced by Eric Krasnow, who's also like one of my awesome. heroes growing up, and also in life like right now, yeah. so <laughs> working with him was probably like one of the greatest dreams come true for me, wow. and he is just like... So overall, Breathe and Let Go is like a really special... That that really album, project that one was was like the yeah, and and, and it was and sort of all of that time, and it came out in February right as <laughs> everything happened. So like, it never really got its day. That's sort of how I feel because yeah. like, I never was able to promote it properly, do the single drops. The you know like yeah. it never really. I couldn't tour on it. Yeah, everything kind of got squished down, and then I just really felt like I had to do something new. 
but those songs are, are really special to me, but also, I mean, I think it's a really great album. So I think the next one, I would love to sort of try to combine a little bit of both and maybe move... You know, there's always going to be probably heavy reggae overtones and and, sure. and anything I do moving forward, but I I think that it won't be exclusive to that. Sure. The way this record is all all reggae and it's many different styles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The next one will probably just have a little flavors more. and yeah. And yeah, 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 different things. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, well, I'd love to hear a little bit more about like your experience as an artist. Like, like when was the first time? You heard of Sugar Shack. I know you've done some cool collaborations with us in the past, but, you know, I'd love to hear just some of your first impressions, if you can remember. I can. I mean, my my impressions were always that, you know, as soon as we started touring with Stick and we did tours with Soja right after that, I just, I started paying attention more to the the reggae scene, the mm -hmm. reggae community mm -hmm. that was going on in America. And I... I just start seeing Sugar Shack pop up constantly. Sick, yeah. And for me, the draw to it was the quality of work. And, mm -hmm. you know, that seems to be always, you know, the defining factor on whether or not you want to work with someone or not is how good they are. And, and this, how good you're portrayed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and, and I just I just never saw a bad session. Yeah. These guys There's are... There's never been a bad session. These guys are the best. They make everybody look and sound Every like session. rock stars. And that's yeah. all. That's what we yeah. want. <laughs> These are gonna be fucking and you know the heavy. first time I worked with them was I think the pop up in Miami yeah right before Jam Cruise mm -hmm. and they made this like Airbnb just seem like some backyard wonderland I mean <laughs> people have probably seen that shoot but it's that it, was yeah. epic like yeah. I remember walking up being like damn this is legit Hell you yeah. know that's awesome. I've done a lot of shoots so cool man yeah that's yeah. awesome to hear that that's just stood out to you but so I mean that's really just getting into the music. Really liking all these new bands that were kind of coming into my ears and then wanting to see them live and then seeing Sugar Shack pop up first, usually. A lot of it was like, and who doesn't? I mean, I'm a kid that loved Nirvana, Unplugged, and all those early Unplugs, like those yeah. defined a lot of my childhood listening. And it's kind of what y'all are doing here. Definitely. So to Go see wrong. a lot of, you know, a lot of the reggae music I listen to is really produced. Mm -hmm. And I think... You know, for good reason. And seeing it stripped down is also quite... It's its uh, own thing. It's quite a it's cool its thing. It's its own thing, yeah, right? So. We talk about this a lot. Like, we're always curious when we hear a band sound. Like, even for you, we're curious. You know, coming in, like, what's that going to sound like? For sure. Stripped yeah. down in, in this tiny deck context, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was I talking deck. to you earlier, they were like... That is small. They are like, I thought the deck was five times bigger than this, and it's it's that's, so tiny, yeah. That's what I said. I was like, man, y'all make that thing look big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but We've you had do a really nine good people job. playing on that thing before. I was like, that's where so We don't recommend it. We don't recommend uh, it. <laughs> that, that is amazing. But yeah, yeah. Um, it really, I think the, the one thing that stood out was the quality. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome, you know, we talk about Both this Both visual a lot, and audio. But, you know, a lot of the guys are artists first, you know, and I think that that's a big thing. It's like, how would they want to be portrayed as musicians and artists and what kind of work would they want it to be if they were on the other side of the camera? And it's a, it's a, it's a unique thing. It's a magical thing. Yeah. But, it's not an easy thing to do either. Like I said, I've done a lot of these, and they don't always turn out so good. Yeah. And it's, you know... Especially stripped down, finding the balance and getting it to sound big, even though it's kind of, yeah. you know, is is not that easy. You got to really kind of have it dialed. Yeah, that's why we got the audio gods here. Yep. The yep. audio gods. Um, we'd love to open it up to Q and A. Any 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 people around here? Questions? Boom, Katie. What are the story behind the logo you have? The logo? Yeah. Um, all right. So, <laughs> I was in Las Vegas, and. Uh, you talking about this one? I assume. That would be it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was in Las Vegas. It was me, me and um, Twiddle's keyboard player, Ryan. We were there together with our manager at the time, Thomas, and we had some spectacular LSD. It was my guy. It was it was amazing. Here we are. I mean, we really. What a coincidence. We, we lit Vegas up. Nice. It was. Unreal. 
sparkles in the air. That's all I and just, say. Anyway, just I'm, you know, I've been, so got, I'm not tatted. like a noob to the so whole thing either. So were you tatted on LS when you were tripping? No. So oh, that night, say, that so we had a hell of a night. <laughs> uh, that night, uh, me and Ryan had we had been talking about getting a tattoo together, and uh, I basically went on Photoshop and whipped this this ta- <laughs> nice. this tattoo up. <laughs> That night with sort of our favorite musical symbols. I threw yeah. the F holes on the side of mine because I play guitar. Yeah, it's cool. But he it plays like piano, so he didn't have the F holes on his. But it was basically like Google images and random stuff <laughs> mished together on Photoshop as best I could that night with my head the way it was. Um, and then we took it to the artist, whatever tattoo place in Vegas it was. And uh, he cleaned it up, made it way better. That's like <laughs> what you see today. Um, and, uh, that was it. Yeah, that was weird. Sorry, it was my first tattoo. I didn't have any tattoos at the time. Wow. So, first tattoo uh, comes off of LSD And I experience. have a lot of tattoos now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, we were planning on doing it in Vegas, but it was a hell oh, of a, it was a, it was a nice couple days there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of me- Vegas melting will do it and to you. Cho- yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah. do it to you. Yeah. Uh, well, what else? What other questions? Nick, what up? I mean, Nate, he, he does, he's done it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh. I do. Um, like, ultimate collabs or some, something I've just been, like, like dream of, Like, dream collabs? You know, like, out of my reach collabs? Or like, <laughs> something, like, something I could... Oh, yeah, one of each. No, no. Oh. I don't think, like, in a spot. Like, someone that you think is on your level, I guess. Hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people in this scene, in, in the like reggae scene, that I'd, I'd still love to work with. And you have been, right? You have been collaborating with a lot of people. I have. No, been. it's been incredible. Uh, it's been amazing. And that's actually one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm so like in love with and attracted to about it is that everyone seems to want to work with each other. Right. And Which put out songs together. Genres, it is. Bit, it's, right? it's not really usually the case in the jam world like where I come from like nobody really puts out songs together or works together like yeah. like that so it was really really kind of cool I mean obviously I'd love to do a song with Stick I mean we've worked together a lot we toured together a lot um, we haven't landed like a, a, a song but I'd like to do one um, you know I, I have a lot of more like I have more I guess like more people I'm listening to that I like, I, I dig their styles. I really yeah. like Denim. I like what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, we like Denim. I really dig his like production style yeah. and his whole vibe. I, I think it's cool. I'd love to work with like, you know, Reb or any of those guys. I mean, yeah. really, I have a, the utmost respect for everybody in the game, and and I feel like everybody has like a, a different thing to offer to a song. Mm-hmm. Specifically, like a song, right? Yeah, they bring their own creative. Yeah, so it. like trying to find the right song and picking the right song for whoever it is, I think is, uh, is kind of the balance, you know, like totally the the right song for the right person, and and working with people that are into the the vibe, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm I'm like I'm more into. Um, I'd like to work with a lot more producers and kind of just like see where that takes it. Cause usually once you start working with people, they have friends that want to come in on the track and join on things. Right. And, and that's how like the natural evolution of that stuff happens. And I feel like that's a more organic way to kind of go about who and how you're working with people. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Sick, man. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, I got my my childhood heroes. You know what I mean. I'd I'd love to work with Dave Matthews at some point in my in my day. So would we. <laughs> you know, I, I Dave. I love his music. He's definitely a huge influence on my yeah. writing style, my lyrical style, everything. So, that's one. You know, I heard it a little bit tonight. Oh, for sure. I like, heard it a little bit tonight. We were talking about it. I we were Katie and I were having a conversation, and then I heard it. I was like. That sounds like it's got a little Dave flavor Yeah, he to had it. he had and such a impact on me. It's awesome, you know, and my Dave. musical listenings as a, as a youngster for sure. Yeah, and he was like my first real concert. Like I I was hitting Dave hard for a minute. Yeah, there. yeah I went I went I went. Well, I try to go every year he, when he plays. Oh, I the love West it, man. Palm, blows my mind every, every time. Sick. I love his band too. I mean, I I think those guys are so tight. Yeah. Um, and then there's like, Dude. you know, there's, I'd like. 
you know, I dig Post Malone. I think I like his stuff. A lot of people think it's weird, but like for some he's reason, a cool artist band. I dig everything yeah. he's throwing down. You know yeah. what I mean? I do. He's a I talented think it, artist. I think it's good. I'd, I'd like to work with him at some point. That would be interesting, right? <laughs> I just saw him cover. I saw him a, vid, a video of him in a studio covering like one of my favorite country artist songs. I'm a big Sturgill Simpson fan. I love Sturgill. It, you love Sturgill? I love Sturgill. Here we fucking go. Yo, I'll, I'll, no, Sturgill. I would say I, I would love to work with Sturgill. That would be epic, dude. I mean, dude, we were we were Whoa. pumping his videos like six years ago in the van, like constantly. Yeah. What and a that, fucking I mean, outlaw! <laughs> that man's the man. Like straight up, I respect the shit yeah. out of him. See, I've been trying to tell all of y'all. No, I'm telling I'm you. Tell y'all. I got I got Justin on him. He got hooked on the Sound and Fury album, and he came up to me the other night. And he was like. It's so good. Dude, Sound of Fury is... <laughs> it's so I didn't know he played guitar like that. Yeah, he's shred. I saw him at uh, Hardly Strictly, man, years ago. Maybe like three years ago or something. And blew my mind, his guitar playing. I was yeah. like, damn. I, I don't think he's doing anything anymore. He's off the grid. He's... God bless him. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's like, fuck y'all. And he's just I mean, doing what he does, whatever damn, that is. Respect. I know, That's right? That's what's up. So we'll see. Maybe more music. Maybe more touring. I think. Like I don't know. I mean, he went like, hard on bluegrass for a minute. Like, yeah. I, man, that guy's the shit. Yeah. Seriously. Hell yeah. Sturgis his like, Simpson. his whole like nose up to the industry like thing. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Epic. Yeah. Well, so far you're checking all of my boxes, Mahali. <laughs> no, We've talked about <laughs> Acid. We've talked about Sturgill Simpson. I mean, I feel like. Yeah, we should be brothers, you know. Uh, <laughs> and maybe we'll take a little. Uh, we'll go to a Sturgill show, have a good time. Hey, that's you know? it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Anybody got any other questions before we wrap up? Oh, Claude's. Waffles or pancakes? Oh, waffles or pancakes? I like my pancakes nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Time. That's actually a lyric. There's been a big debate on one of the lyrics of a Twiddle song. I say I like my pancakes right. With some bacon on the side. Now, apparently, people think I'm saying I like my pancakes dry. Nobody likes their <laughs> pancakes dry, folks. If you think I'm saying that, you just gotta listen harder. <laughs> There's a t at the end of it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I like lots of syrup and the pancakes. I'm gonna say nice from now on. I like my pancakes nice. 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 It's funny you asked me that because we had this long talk about it on the way here <laughs> today. That's what I know. Like, huh? <laughs> technically, we've. We decided this one. That's funny. So yeah. pancakes it is. Nice. Shelby? Okay, first of all, if you haven't heard the Sturgill Simpson in Bloom cover. Oh, oh love oh. it. Nirvana. I got the Nirvana smiley here. In Bloom's, it's, yeah. It's my, my band right there. Sorry if this is a dumb question or if I missed this, but does Mahali come from anything or is that your actual name? It's my actual name. Uh, it, it means Michael in Greek. Michael in Greek. Yeah. Nice. It does. Mahali. There you go. But if you think I'm Hawaiian, <laughs> Nick's, I'm Nick's, okay Nick's with it. Greek in resident here at Sugar Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas. Nick Jonas. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yep. Nice. Indica or sativa? Indica or sativa. Oh. Well, typically, I'm an indica guy, but, uh, you know, there's a time and place for everything. True. True. I'm definitely a sativa guy. Sativa hybrid. Sativa Daytime makes me smoker. crazy sometimes. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I like it. I like the crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, worst on the road. Well, like, experience. like travel experience, venue experience, hotel oh, experience, oh, food experience. Oh. Like, there's a lot. I don't of, know. Pick, pick what? Pick at least like one that you think was is gnarly, real gnarly. Well, this morning, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I we ex morning. we experienced. Where were we saying? Fort Myer. Comfort in Naples. Okay, Naples Comfort Inn. Naples in, that's Comfort Inn. You're up a little bit. You're so um, guys, the, the fire alarms at 9 in the morning oh, is no. not nice. Really loud. And, like, telling us to leave. So we're like, oh, shit, fire. We got to go. You know, so we're getting up. And then power's out. No power. Oh, my then God. Then the alarm goes off, and everyone's like, no, it's just a test. I'm like, why would they do that? <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> make any sense. So we go back to the rooms, then power's out again. That's just a first. But that's by far not the worst. I'm trying to think of the worst. 
Worst food on the road? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this one time in Florida. No. Uh, <laughs> food here was amazing. Shout out to know. Greg. I can't think of anything, like, off top of my head. That's that's good. There's I'm a pretty easygoing good. guy, though. Like, I don't usually get too stressed out about stuff. Nice. I'm sure there's other people that have toured with me over the years that would lots of stories about things that went over my head. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, future looking like for you? What are your plans and moves? Um, well, I have two albums coming out simultaneously this summer, which has been oh, interesting, cool. releasing my solo record and Twiddle's record at the same time. Wow. So one comes out July 20-something, and one comes out August, beginning something. Good that I'm good with dates, but I'm bad with dates. <laughs> um. But, yeah, so, like, I've just, like, there's a lot, 18-something songs coming out this year. So I guess the next thing is just new songs. Getting it out. I'm starting to write the next batch. Yeah. Wherever that is, I think that's probably the yeah. Yeah, next step. Awesome, man. Yep. Well, dude, thank you so much for taking some time and hanging out with us and killing it, crushing session. My pleasure. Thank <laughs> you. It was fun. Yeah, it was Laying really cool. back and having a great combo. Guys, thank you so much. Mahali, thank you so much. Thank Audience, you. give it up. Hey, make sure you're following uh, Mahali on Instagram, Spotify, all DSPs. Make sure you subscribe to Sugar Shack Music Channel. Like this, share this with friends, get the word out. Mahali, thanks again. Thank you, man. See y'all next time on Sugar Shack Podcast. Oh, yeah. That's a wrap. Sugar, 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 sugar